All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Yves Belanger. I was born in Ottawa, Canada, nation's capital, pretty much my whole life until, you know, I moved away until all this bullshit happened and I uh, moved out to the Toronto area and this is where it all began for me. Okay. And uh, ladies, well, hold on. Can you say your name a little a little slower for me, man? So I can... Sure. Yves Belanger. So Yves like Adam and Eve or Yves yeah. Saint Laurent. And uh -huh. it is tough for most people to catch. Yves Belanger? Yeah. There we yeah. go. French. Yves yeah. Ooh, hey, I just found out I'm 13% French. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. There's another thing I want to ask you really quick. And ladies and gentlemen, I know y'all don't know nothing about him yet, but I know a little bit. And I wanted to, uh, I know the nickname that they used to uh, call your crew, right? Yeah. Uh, my wife bought a t-shirt the other day. I don't know if maybe y'all are making them or someone else just took the name or not but champagne gang okay that yes was i've seen them yeah you've seen them yeah i've seen so, them all over so the you internet. have nothing yeah. to do with them though no nothing to do with them oh, okay, actually okay. they used to call us the 902 and O gang yeah before they plastered all over the paper because we blew all the money partying and all that jazz right yeah and i guess the spelling corporation in la caught news of that because it was an actual fine print newspaper print uh -huh. and created a fuss over it, so then it had to change on their own, nothing to do with oh. fucking champagne gang or anything, really. Yeah. Uh, we're just a crew of guys, right? And um, yeah. so then they stuck with that. It's called the champagne gang is what they refer to. That's what they yeah. dimed you as, huh? That's yeah. crazy, man. All right, well, let's get into how that you know all evolved. Ladies and gentlemen, he did some time uh, in Canadian prison, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and his story's wild. His story's wild. Um, I'm going to let you roll with it, man. Where did it begin? Sure. Uh, basic story is, I mean, maybe I'll start at the very beginning. Uh, the way I grew up was I grew up in the hood just like anybody else. So I'm hard as anybody. I could play that role, but now I'm a little more softer. You know, being a family man, married for 20 years, two kids. Yeah. The best years of my life by far, bar not that, right? But anyway, to bring it back, I grew up in the... Demory projects for about seven years and they moved to Ritchie Street, which is a very notorious uh, project as well up in the west end of Ottawa. So by then, when you're growing up in the hood like that, you get a little more corrupt, right? Because I grew up idolizing bank robbers like Patty Mitchell, right? Yeah. And so that's how, you know, I used to roll boosting bikes at 10, shoplifting the whole nine yards. So uh, pretty much at a young age, I was pretty corrupt as it was. Um, and then led on to other things because I wanted to be the next best bank robber in the world. Not that I robbed banks. You but literally I, wanted to do that type stuff, huh? Yeah, it's how sad that was because the old saying is you're a product of society, right? So you are who yeah. you hang out with and it's really true to the core. So that's what happened and led me to this crazy life, which uh, we're going to get into. But um, yeah. lo and behold, and then I got into... Um, you know, a lot of, you know, fights and stuff like that. And then got into, you know, taking scores, uh, simple boosting out of stores and then led up to doing day work, going through coolers inside of a store to hit the smokes out of the back room while my buddy was at the front playing scratch and win. And then it led to hiding in stores for disconnecting the alarm on the doors by, you know, stealing the merchandise and again, the safes. Oh, and, you know, damn, it's etc. escalating. Yeah, just escalating to the point where now I'm jumping on roofs and then coming through the top of the roof. Okay, hold on. Let me let me yeah. back it up, man. Let me yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of shit. So yeah, I'm a little uh, fast tracking here. Yeah. Yeah. Let me back it up. Let me back yeah. it up. What uh, What were some normal? What would you say was one of the crazier hiding spots you had to hide in while the store was closing down or something? Uh that's a great <laughs> question. I'd have to say, for example, and I used to hide in like the WalMarts and Zellers. Um, <laughs> they're a chain up here. I know Walmart is down there. Yeah. Like the I ain't heard of being, Zellers. Yeah. So point is, uh, there was a few times where I would hide uh, back then where they'd have all the clothes on that big ring. Yeah. And be going through the clothes. Well, I'd be right in the ring hanging on a fucking post. Oh, my you God, know, For two hours man. sweating, cramping. <laughs> and uh, yeah, or then I said, fuck that shit. Then I started hiding in the back of stock rooms. I got a little smarter with it, right? So yeah, we used well, to call how, it how was it, man? How How was it? When everyone's gone, you know, like, is it like, uh, you know, is it well, pretty, yeah, pretty first cool? Well, yeah, thing huh? is, you're so cramped up is I would just roll out. The first thing I would do, I mean, not to be, you know, you know, <laughs> disgusting about it, but I would take a piss right in the store, right in the aisle, right away. Oh, right? my God. Yeah, just to relieve myself. <laughs> and uh, 
And again, I would just get up business as usual. And I knew where all the alarms were, all the motions were. And then my first initial, um, you know, tactic was to go and disconnect the alarm on the bet on the door. Uh, Cause all you How'd simply you know did about all these alarms. How'd you know? So they do have motion detectors with. Oh yes, the store? yes. But yeah, and they're garbage. I mean, we call it spinal covers. You only cover 30% of your building in a commercial establishment we'll say. Right. Uh -huh. And so I would case the place during the day. Right. And uh, so I knew exactly like, that's one thing, even though I, you know, I was a special ed kid and I got ADD and stuff like that. But when it came to alarms, I knew where every motion detector was in that building before I would, you know, take it down. Right. So I knew where I can walk and stuff like that. And sometimes we'd have to go through walls to bypass the motion, but I'm fucking with it because there's a way to do that, which I don't really want to divulge on the show yet because it's, I don't want to teach people how to do stuff. Yeah, like we're that. not teaching. We're not teaching. Let's not teach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so, well, let me ask you this, man. Yeah. Really quick before you go yeah. forward. I know I'm stopping. I know people hate no, when you I stop. Take, but it, know, yeah. This is just something I got to know before we go forward, you know. Sure. Uh, how did you get the knowledge like I go in there, I see black round thing on the ceiling. Okay, yeah, it's a camera. But how do you get the knowledge of, okay, that thing has 30 feet radius? You know, how'd you get to well, know all this shit? That's a great question. So this I'll give it up because this is, and it's still happening today. It makes me laugh. So when you're walking in a store and it's late, and there's not a lot of, you know, customers in there. If you notice every motion has a little red light on, right? During the day, and you'll see that red light flicker. Uh -huh. So what it allows you to do during the day when there's no one around to set it off during the day, because it won't set off the alarm, but it tells you where you can walk and where you can't. So as I'm looking at it during the day and I see that light go off, oh, I'm too close or I can't walk here. Oh. So that's the giveaway with these things. They're terrible. <laughs> that's crazy. But how would you learn about the red light? Ah, just common sense. Picked it up, talked to a few older guys that I used to, you know, look up to that were taking scores, and I just kind of made it better and perfected it, and that's what I came up with. Because just like anything, like you're doing, you're very well in interviewing. It's just you, you throw some passion in there, and you become really good at it, right? Because I just fucking loved it. Yeah. Uh, just to take the place down, it was the biggest thing for me. As much as the money was a big incentive, but just pulling it off because I used to feel like, hey, man, I'm a professional. No one does this shit because. If they do, sure enough, they'll end up writing books and movies about me like they did, right? So Yeah. But oh, yeah, that was yeah ladies and gentlemen, they wrote books and movies on this shit now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> crazy, man. And hold on, this happened. I, I don't think they could probably use those techniques too much nowadays, right? With all the yeah. stuff they got going on now or Yeah, yeah, it's still uh, same yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now I've seen a lot of places I walk into and the first thing by, you know, So you still kind of glance and shit like that, huh? Yeah, I just look at I look at it and I think, man, these guys aren't learning. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. And the kid, the kids are thinking, where's the toy store? The dad's like, this damn security. I can get them in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, it's funny. <laughs> I hit a few stores with Toys R Us. I cleaned them out of all the video games because they were like 80 bucks a pop, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, I cleaned those out too. I was right like in the Walmarts and especially what I would do in those places. And it was easy money, man. I'd pull in like 25K, no problem. Is in the one suitcases night? in the in the Walmarts and the Zellers, right? They I would use their luggage to steal oh the video games and God. load up a luggage like one suitcase. You, you're looking at six grand in your pocket, right? And I oh. would get fill those things up with like you know eight, nine, ten, twelve suitcases, and have my buddy at the door. And back then, you didn't have cell phones. God forbid, if we had cell phones back then, I would have I would have made fuck. I probably would never millions, huh? Yeah, I just, you know, he had the old beeper thing. 911 means the heat's around the corner, right? Yeah. Or two, I'm at the back and I'd open the door, let him in, and then we'd load up the car, right? That we'd burn and then, you know, drive off, right? That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's one this of the many angles we used to kind of come up with to make money, yeah. Look, man, I say this all the time. Every time I think I had the most entertaining guest on the show. Yeah. It just beats it every time, man. You know, <laughs> this shit is so interesting to me man it's yeah. crazy i'm like picturing the whole thing too I, i'm picturing you rolling out the damn center of the thing taking a leak in the aisle and look we probably never would have talked about that if i didn't reverse it a second you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i gotta laugh, dig I man i gotta challenge. dig for the good stuff you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. uh well, we would rub it in sometimes too when i was doing all these shopper drug marts because we had about 54 of those and we take a shit in the safe after i mean just because we're assholes right oh my <laughs> god you would drop deuces in the safe man yeah terrible yeah i know yeah so okay so let's get into what well, really 
put you out there, like with the media coming in through the roofs, right? Yeah. What gave you the idea to come through the roofs? I'm trying to remember how we clued in on that. Um, well, I just knew there was a crew out there who were only strictly doing smokes, right? Cigarettes. Mickey Mouse little crew. They took a couple pinches, but I clued in that the action went through the roof. And if you look at any commercial roof, it's really simplified. All it is is insulation, crushed stone, tar, and underneath it, you have that 22 gauge steel, you know, uh, angled yeah. in panels, right? They're four foot sheet by whatever, 10 feet long panels, right? And all you would do is with a simple pickaxe, because we would climb the yellow gas poles and risk our life with a pickaxe down our back, right? Yeah. And 10 snips, right? And we'd shimmy it up at night, and then we knew where the the manager's office was. And if we didn't, I knew a place to come down and then go through walls to get to the manager's office and go setting off the lines, right? And what it is is when you use a pickaxe, you, you cut a nice little square on the roof with the tar, rip it up, takes you about an hour. Take the pickaxe right through the tin, make some holes, and then start cutting with tin snips, right? And then we'd have a perfect square hole and then shimmy down, and that's how we would get in the building. Flooded some stores sometimes because in the winter – you know, the snow would melt, the heat's flying out and then start dripping. Next thing you know, those oh tiles, suspended as tile or the suspended ceilings, right, would hold up water and then they'd collapse through. Oh they'd soak my God. And set off the alarm. We're like, you fucking idiot. Why did you have to pop a hole here, right? We could have went over on the side and, you know, eliminated that, right? But yeah. trial and error, right? Same thing. You know, this makes me, uh, well, I can't remember who was doing it, but it was real. And there was guys, they even made a movie on it. Uh, there was guys that were parking their trucks next to the side of a building, and they would just go right through the freaking wall. And the truck is on the side of the building, so they can't even see what's going on, yeah. you know? And they yeah. went right in like that, loaded up the truck, yeah. drove off, and there, there you go. There's a hole in the freaking wall. It's yeah. crazy, man. Well, uh, well, I drove a truck through a store one time. I blew up with the bookie. I had to come back with six dimes, right? Say and what? Says, you did what? I drove a stolen truck right through a pharmacy barred up window because I needed to get the money to pay the bookie or, you know, you put me in a fucking pretzel. Right? We don't want oh, that. my God. You were gambling too, man. Oh, well, that's what fed it was the gambling. I lost cars. I've lost oh. everything. Gambling, right? uh, but, yeah, sure enough, just a stupid, desperate attempt. I was in a rush. Fuck it. Let's just steal the car. We're giggling about it. Drive and ram it through the fucking store and it stalls in the store. So I never got the smokes with it. I've done just about anything you could think of. That's one of the million ways that I've done, you know, taking scores, right? But yeah, pretty crazy life back then. Yeah, and you would never know it looking at my life. Now. Hell no, man. It's crazy, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I, I have so many damn questions. I don't know which one to ask first. What do you think would be probably uh, one of the wildest heists that you had, man? It would probably, when it came to like, uh, danger i guess or whatever um, made it wild fuck there's so many so man. many dude you. god dude you got so many stories you're like a wealth you're yes, like a ba yeah. oh ladies yeah. and gentlemen he started a youtube channel as well he did what what is yeah. your youtube channel name my friend you just uh, dropped what your first video or two uh yesterday he, and today yeah i think i owned it i'm only doing it to give back because that's my whole goal now to show hey i've turned my life around and it's top closer 99 is my instagram and if you go there you're going to see the shit's real where where i've been and where i am and how successful i am that's my whole premise of getting on youtube now to give back to guys coming out of the joint because you know i don't give a shit what anybody says i met a lot of good people in there they just took pitches and uh, you know made bad choices like i did but deep down they really had big hearts and they really cared about their family just as much as I did and stuff like that. So, but the problem with those people is they just don't know how to get out and integrate properly and, and become successful. And really they, they're missing the, the main talent in which I was going to get into the show here with you or later, or even on my own YouTube. Um, in my opinion, we're all born salesmen. If you're in the joint, most of us anyways, because there's a lot of key things we've learned in there and from the street that gives us the edge over your normal straight john and i don't mean straight john is a bad thing i'm a straight john now that's great you just as you are right yeah um but i mean in terms of you know what we've learned we have a such a massive edge over them when it comes to the sales game and that's what's you know saved my life personally right yeah uh, so i got into the sales game and you know i've done very well for myself um, well that's good you know? man yeah that's cool. excellent uh I think the number one problem with people coming out of prison, I feel as though 
they already put in their head that they're only going to amount to this much because yeah. they are branded. You know, they've, they're have they a felon or they got violent crimes. They're like, this is all I'm ever going to be, a, a ditch digger, yeah. and that's it. You know, uh, yeah, bullshit you, labor jobs, all that bullshit. Yeah, that's it. It's, bullshit it's not, labor. It's not like that, man. It's not. It's it, not. That's the sad part about it because the system, the correctional system, didn't prepare them properly, in my opinion. All they did is dish them off to a fucking parole officer. Like, he gives a really shit because I don't yeah. think they do. I mean, they're nine to five, just like we, like I am and you are. We all got problems, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't think they're, you know, integrating them properly and really, you know, figuring out what the real skill set are. And, and really, it is sales. They just don't even know it. I've met so many people in my life, and I've hired farm school sales, real estate sales. I've hired them all, right? And half of them didn't even realize that they were born salespeople. But the best salespeople that I groomed from the street, and I, I, I mean, I, I hired a kid. I mean, not that he was a con man. Uh, he was trying to sell me pens and pencils uh, off the street. Young guy with a $2 suit and plus 30 degree weather. Uh, this kid today now, I mold him into, he's a millionaire now. He's making like 300K a year. Uh, all because of the, something I spotted, the, the aggression that he had of trying to, you know, sell me a calendar, which was, you know, kind of, wow, you're pretty aggressive. But point being is I met much more aggressive guys in the can who would have schooled this kid, but they just, they're not getting in the sales field and they don't realize how good the art sales because the biggest attribute I think we both learned is reading the play. What is the real agenda here when they're meeting people, right? Yeah. Uh, we know how to manipulate people uh, as well. Not that I know it's sort of a dirty word, but it's fucking reality, right? If we need to yeah, get well, something, we figure out how to get to a screw, right? And we, hey, you butter the fucking guy up and you're trying to get something to him, you know, trying to get him to get, bring you in a package, which I had screws bringing me packages, you know, not packages, but playboys and all kinds of shit for me. And there were guards, yeah. right? Let alone signing their books for them that they came up before I got ill, right? That's crazy, man. Yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty funny, though. What fucking screw signs your book for you, right? <laughs> yeah, that's wild, man. You know, yeah, so, but hey, but you are very right, man. And I've said it on my, all over my channel, man. Be very careful, especially, you know, because convicts are very manipulative, man. And they, yeah. they, they do stuff, a lot of them will, will, will just play the game and... Really, there's hidden agendas behind everything, and uh, that is what it is. But it ain't just convicts. But, yeah, convicts, they, you know, it's a different level in prison, you know. Well, uh, well they're but, better. They're better, right? Because yeah, they're, they're, they're not better, scared man. to push. Yeah. Right? Versus the straight John, eh, I don't want to step on any toes. Fuck that shit. I'll step on his toes. I need to get move up here. i got to pay the goddamn bills. My wife's crying. You know, whatever it is. But we have the 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 balls to do that, right? Where yeah. some people don't. We're just like obscurity, right? The normal straight John doesn't want to get on video like I'm doing or doing a selfie because they feel like someone's going to laugh at them. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of trained like that. Where us, we don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's just my whole stick with my kids. And I try and train my kids. Hey, don't worry about what people think. They're the ones who are going to hold you back. And once you start to shine, they're really going to really hold you back, right? They're going to start yeah. talking shit, right? So. Damn right, man. That's good piece. Yeah. That's some good shit. Uh, well, let me. Well, I do have a couple more questions, man, sure. pertaining to the whole uh, uh, grand scheme of things. Uh, yeah. How much money did you make altogether, man? Just a, just That's a rough. <laughs> or let's, how much money did the media say you made? Uh well, we grabbed about five, six, five. I mean, with merch about five, six million, right, over a five-year span. And uh, we fucking blew it all on gambling, girls, oh you know, party. I used to party. Like for me, we used to go Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But during the day, I'd be scouting because, I mean, I was wanted in 27 jurisdictions alone just in the province of Ontario, let alone mm. West Coast because we didn't want to work in the winter. We go to West Coast and work, right? Uh, because it's a little warmer. The weather is not as brutal in yeah. Ontario like we're having right now, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're in the millions and um, – yeah, and like I was saying, I've lost cars gambling. Uh, I remember I'm losing 5000 just cutting the deck while my buddy was taking a shower, right? I mean, we pretty much fucking bet on everything from many Oh, you were in the high roller, high roller areas, huh? Yeah, yeah. We were pretty degenerate like that. That's what fed it all because we weren't gamblers. We wouldn't have kept going because you got to pay the bookie, right? That's crazy, man. Yeah. What was y'all's uh, games of choice? Uh, well, I was big in the sports, uh, big on blackjack, uh, big on mini potty. Blackjack's my PGA. favorite. Don't don't let me meet you in a casino, man. God, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ruin our lives together. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, God forbid, man. The devil's coming, right? I, mean, I know, yeah. man. I love blackjack, man. That's yeah. my yeah, shot. Play, I got a professional blackjack table in the basement. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got a professional man cave in my basement. Like all sound, oh, cold theater, you name it, man. God, man, that's yeah. crazy. From yeah. prison, from doing all this stuff, man. You know, you're blessed, yeah. my friend. You're blessed, and you know, yeah, th it's amazing. Yeah, I'm it's very amazing, happy man. with it. And again, it's all because of sales, right? So that's the whole shtick about what I'm trying to present out there to help the guys. And it's going to be a play by play and, you know, use my own template. What got me here? Because I mean, I'm living in a 4,800 square foot home. I got toys. I got, you know, all kinds of shit money put away. I'm taking off in a couple weeks to Dominican again. Like I do every year. I take two, three trips a year with my family. Oh, you like Dominican? Uh, and I've been balling like this for 15 years now, but being undercover and, you know, not really letting people know what my real story was, right? But I think it's time now to share because I just did a movie last uh, last year in L.A. with Daniel Zerilli as a cameo with uh, Jay Moore, Bill Duke, a bunch of major actors and that uh, because of, you know, what I've been through. I got the Wolf of Wall Street. You know, me and him are kind of chumming all the time. He's following me on Instagram. He only follows 100 people, right? He's got a million followers pretty much. Um, so I got his The original Wolf of Wall Street guy. Yeah, yeah. He follows me. I talked to him on DM. Just is, And I'll tell you... Wait, hold on. He's the guy that they made the movie with Leonardo uh, DiCaprio, DiCaprio, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Damn, tell, tell Wolf yeah. Wall Street to come on the show, man.